There's no doubt uh, that a great many Americans uh, support changing marriage laws uh, to have them apply to same-sex marriage. And we were seeing the democratic process operate. But you don't. Uh, I support the Constitution and letting the democratic process operate. Pro-democratic process, Senator Ted Cruz. For years, Republican politicians like Ted Cruz have gotten away with being neither for nor against marriage equality for LGBTQ folks. It's because in 2015, the Supreme Court quite famously made marriage equality the law of the land. It found a constitutional right for people to marry the person they loved, and it was no longer then a live political issue. And because voters support it by a massive margin, two to one in most of the polls, Republicans were kind of off the hook. But now, in the wake of the radical right-wing Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade in 50 years of precedent, and, crucially, Justice Clarence Thomas explicitly calling to overturn the case that made a marriage equality the law of the land, Republicans in the Senate and the Congress are now having to pick a side. Because, you see, yesterday, Democrats in the House brought up a bill that would federally protect existing same-sex marriages, make states recognize marriages from other states, and also repeal the odious Defense of Marriage Act. The bill passed with a big bipartisan majority, 267 to 157, 157 Republicans voting against, which means most House Republicans voted against it. But again, 47 voted for it. So that bill now comes to the Senate, which is why Senate Republicans are suddenly so squirrely on the issue. Seems focused on nothing. Right now, I'm focused on the CHIPS legislation. I haven't, I, I haven't read that bill, and the details are really important. Yeah, so I feel more comfortable answering it after I read the legislation. Okay. It's a pure messaging bill. I mean, it's obviously settled law right now. You vote no. Again, I'm, I'm a, it's, a, it's such a silly messaging bill. I'm just not going to address that. I'm not, I'm not answering questions that are about hypotheticals that are just Pelosi trying to divide America and Gulf Wars. Here's the thing, because there is overwhelming support for this, the bill could clear the 60-vote filibuster threshold. It could get 10 Republican votes and then become law. The president can sign it. It's really a rare example of what going on offense on, quote, social or cultural issues looks like, particularly when you have public opinion in your favor. You press the advantage. And here, either Republicans vote against this wildly popular provision, or you enshrine people's marriages into law, or both. Yesterday, Democratic Congressman Mondaire Jones, one of just a few openly gay members of Congress, took to the floor to introduce the House bill in a moving and personal speech. Take a look. I am one of only nine openly gay members of this body. For me, this is personal. I still remember where I was on June 24th, 2011, the day the New York State Legislature passed marriage equality. I was living with my friends in New York City, but I was still closeted. And I was so afraid still that someone might find out the truth about my being gay. So instead, I closed the door to my room and cried tears of joy by my lonesome. Finally, my home state of New York had recognized me as a full human being, affirmed all of those scary yet beautiful feelings that I had bottled up inside for decades, wondering, hoping one day that the world would change. Four years later, the Supreme Court's decision in Obergefell sent this same message to millions. Since Obergefell, nearly 300,000 same-sex couples have been married. Imagine telling the next generation of Americans, my generation, that we no longer have the right to marry who we love. Congress can't allow that to happen. And Congressman Mondaire Jones, who gave that speech, Democrat of New York, joins me now. Congressman, it's great to have you. I, I really uh, appreciated what you had to say on the floor. Uh, maybe you could start by responding to Senator Cassidy's uh, characterization of this bill as a, quote, silly messaging bill. What do you think of that? There's nothing silly about protecting fundamental rights in this country. Uh, so many of my Republican colleagues over in the United States Senate have suggested in the past few days that uh, these precedents set by the Supreme Court are settled. But of course, we know that the right to an abortion was settled law for 50 years until it wasn't. And Justice Clarence Thomas, in his concurring opinion, was honest in setting his sights and the sights of the majority on the Supreme Court, that far right 6-3 majority on the Supreme Court, on other, other fundamental rights like the right to marriage equality. It's why I'm so glad that the House passed my bill with Jerry Nadler and others last night called the Respect for Marriage Act. 
there is a real possibility that this could pass pass the Senate. Um, but before we get to that, one thing that's striking here is the speed and aggressiveness with which the Democrats have moved on this, right? I mean, this has come together in a few weeks. It seems like an example of seizing the moment, pressing the advantage, doing the thing. How, how did it come together so quickly? Imagine that, Chris. Democrats actually leveraging the power right. that they have to galvanize the American people to turn out in November to make sure that we finally protect fundamental rights in this country. And of course, to your point earlier, we may well get 10 Republican senators of good conscience to vote for this legislation. I'm not counting on it, but I remain optimistic that 10 people on the Republican side in the United States Senate will look back on the progress that we have made and say, hey, we have to recognize the full humanity of everybody, that everyone deserves to live complete lives, including members of the LGBTQ plus community. And we should be doing this with so many other pieces of legislation, whether it is codifying the right to contraception, uh, the right to interracial marriage, and so much more. We should be having and forcing up or down votes on this legislation, which is precisely what I'm calling on the United States Senate to do on this and other bills. Yeah, the cases you're mentioning there, Loving v. Virginia, which found a constitutional right on their substantive due process to interracial marriage. Griswold, uh, which found a substantive uh, due process right in the Constitution to uh, birth control, uh, a right to privacy that protects that decision and that action. Um, these were the line of cases, although notably not loving, that Clarence Thomas pointed to uh, as necessary to be reconsidered. It's interesting to me because you've been a very outspoken critic of the court. An, a, an outspoken proponent of expanding the court. There's something striking about the fact that for years, conservatives said, this shouldn't be the judiciary, let the democratic process decide. And now the democratic process is deciding and a lot of them don't seem to like it very much. Uh, and of course, these are the same people who say, let the states decide questions of fundamental constitutional rights, even as they themselves at the state level enact voter suppression laws. As you know, we are facing the worst assault on our democracy since the Jim Crow era. Uh, and so we've got to defeat that voter suppression. By the way, voter suppression that has been unleashed by the Roberts court itself yes. through decision after decision since 2013, striking down the Voting Rights Act or dismantling key provisions of the Voting Rights Act, which was the crown jewel, the greatest legislative achievement of the civil rights movement. And of course, fundamental rights are not up or should not be up to a vote. If we recognize that rights are fundamental, they should be enshrined and recognized even by the highest court in the land, even a judiciary that has been packed by Mitch McConnell and his Republican allies in the United States Senate through, for example, denying Merrick Garland a seat and leaving a vacancy open for 14 months following the death of Antonin Scalia. And then, of course, going back on that same rule that he invented and rushing through the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett, even as a presidential election was underway and even as millions of votes had already been cast. When I introduced my legislation to add four seats to the Supreme Court, even my Democratic colleagues scoffed at me for the most part more than a year ago. But I knew we would find ourselves in this moment. And I'm, fine. I'm glad that the, that the American people are on our side.